Today in Matt's class, we are gonna go over the mixed media painting technique. This is the very first step to get your paintings to look like that larger than life movie poster style. We begin with the darkest darks. So the very first step that we are doing for the painting process is the darkest darks. So I have two portraits that I'm doing. One is Princess Kamala, who is portrayed by Christy Dumar. It's the princess from Aladdin 3477. I'm also doing Aladdin himself with his sidekick Fiji, and he is portrayed by Eric Steele. This is gonna be slightly different because this is on a texture board that I used gesso in order to kind of put that texture on there. So here's the first step. It's very easy. It's easier said than done just because a lot of times I find artists are very timid to start with something this dramatic. But essentially what you need to do, you've got your awesome drawing that we have here. If you didn't see the first video on the underdrawing, you should check that out. But what we need to do, we are gonna look at our reference, and it's very easy. Anywhere that you see absolute black, anywhere that has your darkest darks, we are gonna take our gesso. This is black gesso right here. By the way, if you're interested in the materials that I use, I actually have an entire video called Painted Illustration Materials. And if you haven't watched it yet, you should totally check it out and I talk about black gesso and why this is so much better to use than regular black acrylic paint. So here's what we're gonna do, very simple. I am going to open up, I'm gonna shake up for no reason, but I'm going to open up my black gesso. And here is some of the, I'm just gonna use it right out of the cap because I don't need to mix anything. I don't need to have a tray of any sort, but I'm going to basically look at this photo and anywhere I see absolute black, I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in. I can always paint on top of this later. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can get your details nice and sharp, that will help. If there's an area that's really dark brown, almost black, but not quite, if it's not absolute black, don't bother. You'll get that later. In general, when I'm painting anything, because I'm right-handed, I usually start at the upper left-hand side and I work my way down like this. Because if I start with something down here and then I go to paint here, like I can get, I'll get the paint all over and then it smears all over the place. Don't wanna do that. So in general, I always start at the upper left. If you were left-handed, you would probably wanna start on the upper right and work your way down. You don't have to do that, and I've actually never heard another artist say that they do that, but that's just a technique that kind of works for me and makes it foolproof. I'm actually very accident-prone. I'm kind of a klutz in all other areas of my life. So, Anything that's foolproof that can kind of help, I'm always trying to do that. Trying to get some nice chiseled edges. One of the things about not just acrylic, but a lot of different paints, a lot of times it can look a little bit clumpy. You try to get anything that you can do to sometimes chisel those edges, especially for something like hair, so that it's just a little bit more chiseled. And some of this we can paint over to really define those edges. Some of this later in the technique, we can actually, the last step is color pencils. So areas like the eyes, you want to chisel out because these are the darkest darks and these are a lot of times in the eyes, especially if there's like eyeliner and dark lashes. These are really gonna define where your painting goes. So I'm looking for darkest darks. Now, when you're doing your darkest darks, you want to paint what you see, not what you know. So for example, in the nostrils, like I can see her nostrils here. Her nostrils are not absolute black in this photo. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that doesn't make sense. What someone's nostrils, it, it, gets, it gets really dark in there. It's, it's black. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know what? I don't see it, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I know nostrils are really dark. 
you can't do that. You need to draw and paint what you see, not what you know. As soon as you, you start playing these little games with your head of what you think things should be, you're making it look different than the photo and it's gonna start looking like a different person. We're gonna make this look better than the photo and we are gonna make it larger than life, but things like that you need to keep in check. The brows are just a little bit darker down at the bottom here in front, so I don't wanna make all of the eyebrows completely black, but just where I see it here. If someone did feel as though they botched part of their darkest darks, would they go around later after with a different layer of color to cover that up? Yes, in fact, you'd want to do, once you're done painting your darkest darks, you would want to fix that with white gesso and, uh, and separate your darks and lights right away, kind of as quick as possible. I don't want to make just a dark line across the lips because you know what, I don't see it dark all the way across. There's just a couple of areas here where it does get a little bit darker. Otherwise, just the darkest darks. Anything else is too much. So the details like this don't have to be perfect, but any indication that you can get early on is just going to save you some time. All right, I've got my darkest darks. Unlike other painting techniques, this works out really well because normally when you're doing a painting, a lot of times there's so much kind of underpainting uh, things that you're doing that the painting doesn't really look good until the end and you're kind of building towards what that end is gonna be. The great thing about this mixed media technique, it looks awesome to begin with and then it just looks better and better and better. So you start with a drawing that looks amazing. You add in the darkest darks and already like, wow, look at that contrast. I could just leave it like this. I could sign it like this and it doesn't look finished, but it already looks good. Like I could just leave it like this and it would look really, really cool. So that's the great thing about this technique. And I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna add the darkest darks on Aladdin. His is gonna be a little bit chunkier. It's a little bit more texture, but here we go. I'm looking for my darkest darks and I can see a lot more clearly now than I could when I was under the projector. When you've got this texture, it's a little bit harder to work with. It's a little bit bumpier. So again, that's the reason why it kind of works well if you've got a character that's a little bit more rugged. Aladdin's a little rougher around the edges, so you can kind of get away with that a little bit more. Is it typically a concern that the gesso will bleed into the creases and grooves of the board itself? It a little bit, but if you if you just kind of practice with it and just try to have a a steady hand it'll usually be okay it is going to be a little bit more it is going to be a little bit bumpy and the gesso is has a better consistency than most paints like most opaque paint you would really it'd be like painting with toothpaste and then on top of the the textured surface to boot I mean, it's not really it's not really easy but again if you've got more of a rugged character it'll almost add to the charm of it all and with facial hair i feel that Sometimes it just takes, a, I guess, a, is it a matter of opinion where the darkest darks are going to be? Because I feel like I would just put them all in. But if you look close, that's a great question, James, but if you look closely, it's not all dark. It's not all darkest darks. So you really have to, even though his he has a generally dark, like almost black beard, again, you can't draw what you, if painting what you know, oh, his beard is black. I'm going to paint his beard black. You don't paint what you know, you paint what you see. It's actually not black until it gets into this little corner mm. right under the mouth there. So you wanna try it to- It takes a very discerning eye there. Mm-hmm. Discerning. I like it. There we go, there is our darkest darks on Aladdin. This is the first step. Now, you have to put your darkest darks in first in order for this technique to work. So a lot of times I have students that they get nervous and they're like, I don't want to go that dark yet. 
and they say, I'll do it later. I'll, I'll wait till later in the process, then I'll go back and add my darks then. You can't, you need to do this now. One of the reasons why this works so well, why you need to get these darkest darks in is because when we do the next step, when we start painting in our washes, we need to see that contrast. In order to get our values good, we need to see that contrast between the white of the board and those darkest darks. We need to see that. If you don't put your darkest darks in first, if you're like, ah, I'll do it later, you're not gonna have good values to judge when it comes to putting that color on. Hear me now and believe me later, do your darkest darks now. It's the very first step. So I want you guys, if you guys like this, if you think this is already looking good and you're ready to do this, I want you to give me a like. Also let me know in the comments what you think about putting the darkest darks. I know some of you are like, oh, but watercolor, you kind of go lightly and you work your way darker. That's great for watercolor. Enjoy that process when you're doing that process. This is the mixed media process that's gonna make it look like a movie poster, that larger than life look. So let me know some comments, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You should share because you care. And last but not least on the IG, it's Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.